Hey guys, Joe here with Seattle Coffee Gear, not in Portland. Gail let me borrow the studio for the weekend and I'm gonna take you through some Turkish coffee making from Turkey as the name would suggest. Uh, when I was talking about this adorable little pot in one of my last videos, I called it an ebrick. Uh, apparently I've been working under some misinformation. Ebrick is just a generic term for water pot. Uh, it is actually called another word that I will not attempt to butcher the pronunciation on, but you can look it up. Uh, it's fun. Google Translate can actually like say it for you. Uh, but to make Turkish coffee, you definitely need a little teeny pot. The flared sides are very important. It helps catch the coffee grounds because this is unfiltered, total immersion brewing. Some sort of grinder that can get super duper fine is also really important. When you grind to Turkish coffee, you want your coffee grounds to feel like talc powder. Uh, if you rub it on your fingertips, it should fill in the voids on your fingerprint. Uh, that's how you know it's fine enough. So coffee pot, coffee grinder, adorable little demitasse cups are always helpful. And in my method, some sugar and cardamom. So traditional recipes on Turkish coffee say to fill however many demitasse cups you want with ice cold, well not ice cold, cold water pour it in the ebrick, put in one teaspoon of sugar, bring it to boil, and then you do a heaping teaspoon of coffee per demitasse cup, or a heaping teaspoon per two demitasse cups. And a heaping teaspoon is a really inaccurate way to measure things. And every time I've made coffee that way, I just go, no, because I want to be able to make the same cup of coffee twice. And if I make a really good cup of Turkish coffee, I want to drink it again, and a heaping teaspoon does not yield that. So I've played around, I've come up with a recipe that I like and a method of, that I like, and coffee ratios are my thing. So my Turkish coffee, coffee ratio, is one part coffee to 12 parts water. So today we're going to be using 144 grams of water to 12 grams of coffee. Uh, maybe 13, it's like 12.6 something. And uh, first things first, pour your water into the ebrick. I take a small spoonful of sugar. Uh, in this instance, it was seven grams of sugar. And then start things off. Bring it to boil. You can stir it once or twice with your handy dandy coffee manipulation tool. But mostly this is patience. Just sit and wait. Uh, today I have the Under Pressure uh, Coffee Blend by Slate Roasters. It's going to be a really nice, fruity, brighter Turkish coffee. I tend to avoid single origins with Turkish because of the nature of the extraction. They can be really sour uh, and not very well developed. And uh, yeah. Sit back, relax, we'll join you once we're, uh, once we're boiling and ready to go. All right, welcome back. We have a nice rolling boil with our lightly sugared water here in the, the Turkish coffee pot. I'm going to pull it from heat, but leave my hot plate or stove on because as soon as I incorporate my coffee, I'm going to put it back on heat. Uh, we have our finely ground coffee in this adorable little tulip cup. I have put a pinch of cardamom in there as well. I highly suggest this. Cardamom is amazing. Uh, it's very effervescent and floral and makes Turkish coffee taste so good. Uh, but yeah, just dump your coffee into the pot. And once again, following that ratio of one part coffee to 12 parts water, I'm going to make sure that I don't have any coffee sitting around the rim. And then I give it a little stir just to make sure that all of those clumps are gone. And I don't want any coffee attached to the spoon either because that will happen. As soon as it's good, back on the heat and then you'll watch it like a hawk. What's going to happen is it's going to slowly come to boil and there will be bubbles that form around the rim of the, the pot because the pot will be hotter than the center 
And then as soon as those bubbles form, you remove it from heat, let those bubbles subside. So that's the first one. And then we're going to do that three times. And then it happens very fast afterwards. Two. And three. And then here's the important part. You don't drink that right away. Uh, all of those coffee grounds are still floating around dissolving. We need to wait for them to absorb enough water, get rid of the stuff that they will get rid of, which is what we're going to drink, and then sink to the bottom. It takes about three, three and a half minutes. Uh, put it on a trivet, something to keep the coffee pot warm. You don't want to put it on a cold countertop because that will cool off your coffee quicker. Welcome back again. Uh, so everybody that generic hive mind that exists out there says that Turkish coffee needs to have the foam to be good. It's not real Turkish coffee. It's not good Turkish coffee without that foam. I kind of sort of disagree with that. Uh, that foam is mostly protein structures and protein doesn't really taste good. Just it doesn't buy some protein powder from your local protein powder supplier, uh, whomever that may be, wherever that may be, and just take a spoonful of it and eat it. It will taste like you're licking a chalkboard. It's not texturally pleasing. Uh, fats and sugars feel good in the mouth. Protein doesn't. So I tend to like spoon off the protein and just get rid of it because it also will occasionally have floating bits of coffee. Uh, and I don't want that to get in my teeth because it's really fun to be like, hey guys, how you doing? I've had my Turkish coffee today. Uh, but when your three minutes are up, if you want the foam or not, that is up to you. I suggest trying it both ways. You take your Adorbs little cup and your coffee pot and very slowly and gently pour. Remember you are letting the lip of the pot catch those coffee grounds as much as possible. And if you have a friend, bring another cup. Cheers. It's so cardamomy.